here I've got 1 over 89 is equal to this uh, recurring decimal, not recurring, this never ending decimal. So we've got 0.0112359. Now some of those numbers should be quite familiar. Um, so it starts off looking quite Fibonacci-esque. Um, the problem being here, we're expecting that to be an 8 rather than a 9. Now, for now I'm, I'm going to ignore uh, the 9, uh, and we'll come back to it later. Um, let's just pretend we haven't seen that last digit for a minute, and let's pretend it, it carries on doing the Fibonacci forever. What I want to do is just briefly justify that these two things are equal. And I'm going to use a trick that sometimes uh, they use for reoccurring decimals at um, a star step, which you can see. Uh, and the, the trick is this. What we're going to do is we're going to define um, some letter x equals that thing up there. So 0 0.011235 dot dot dot. Um, and now, now we have these, these kind of clever tricks. What we can do is we can times the whole thing by 10. Um, so 10x, well, it turns into by 10 when you've got it in a decimal way, it's just moving everything along. So we've got 0 0.11235 dot dot dot. Um, now, what we know about Fibonacci numbers is if we add one to the next one, you get the one after that. So, if, if I added these two things together, I've got 11x equals 0 0.1, that's going to be 2, that's going to be 3, 5, 8, etc. What we've got is the Fibonacci numbers coming along again, except we've only got one one here. Fibonacci usually starts with two ones. But this is quite a useful thing, because this is all the digits after the first one. What we want to do eventually is get to the point where we have some number of x equals some integer, because we can rearrange that for x to find what it is, it's a fraction. Well, if we use these to take away all of these places, that would be good, we'd be on the right thing. But these are, this is a much smaller number than this. What we want to do is shunt all of these that way a bit, so that that one is in line with that one, that two is in line with that two, and so on. We can do that by timesing this whole thing by 100. So 100x is going to be 1.1235 dot 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 dot. And now everything's kind of lined up. So if we did this one take away this one, 100x um, take away 11x is 89x. And then we've got 1 take away 0 is 1 and everything else is just going to cancel out. So we've got 89x equals 1, and so we've got x equals 1 over 89. Right. That's only part of a more generalised result. Uh, I'm just going to briefly explain why we actually had the 9 after this. It's because if we carried on writing our Fibonacci numbers, that would be an 8, and the next one would be 13, which would be 3 in that place, plus 1 there. The next number after that would be 21, which is 1 in that place, and 2 there. So actually the next two digits would be 9 and then 5. It's just because it's all shunted up that they all start running into each other. So it gives us the start of the Fibonacci numbers very nicely, and then it gets less nice. I'm going to clear this off, and then we're going to do a more general one. Um, okay, so I, I've got a new uh, decimal written up, and I've written up in an attempt to solve the problem of them collapsing together. So I've put in extra zeros between the things. So instead of zero, which is, we've got zero, zero. Instead of one, we've got zero, one, then zero, one, then zero, two, then zero, three, zero, five, zero, eight. And it gives us two places for each of our things. So we can now fit in one, three, two, one. We, we've got two spaces assigned for each Fibonacci number. Now, this again is just delaying the problem. We're going to have that problem when we get to the three digit numbers. So when we get to one, four, four, which is the first Fibonacci three digit number, that's going to start bleeding over into the others, but at least we can get uh, more of the Fibonacci numbers with this. And the question is, uh, what fraction does this become? And it's quite a nice thing for it, but we're going to solve it in exactly the same way. Um, so our thing before was times them by 10 to shut them up um, under the next Fibonacci number that we wanted to add them to, but actually shunting them up one place isn't going to do it anymore. If I want to add that 2 to that 1, I'm going to have to times by 100 to shunt it up two places. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have 100x equals 0, 0 0.0, that 1 is going to move there, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. I'm, I'm not going to do the rest of it, it follows the same pattern. 
Um, and then, as before, we're going to write those two things together because we've got this nice Fibonacci uh, property that we can use. That if we add two Fibonacci numbers, we get the next one. So 101x, adding them together, equals 0 0.01020305. Dot dot dot. We've done the adding. Again, we've got the Fibonacci numbers, but without the first one there. Now we need to do the same trick. We've got all of these. We want to use these to take away these ones that way. So what I need is that one over here. So what we need to do is times by um, 100 squared. Uh, so last time, when we were doing the first one, we times by 10, and then we times by 10 squared to do this step. In this one, we're timing by 100 and 100 squared. And it will follow this general pattern as we go. So if I times by 10,000, Um, we're going to have 1.01020305 dot dot dot. And now we've got everything lined up. So if I do this one take away this one, and I'll get that take away that, what well, on the right hand side we can see we're just going to get 1, which is how we were constructing it. That was the idea. And on this side, 10,000 take away 101 is 9899x. And so we've got our result x equals 9899. But this is actually just part of a more general thing, and it's just a really nice pattern. So our first one was x equals uh, 1 over 89. Oops, sorry. It's not right, is it? 1 over, sorry. So our, our first x was 1 over 89. This is what, uh, x equals 1 over 9899. But if we wanted to, so they have three digits each, we can just extend it. Uh, the result is what you might expect. It's 1, 9, 9, 8, 9, 9, 9. So it's like we get these whole strings of 9s, but in the middle two, you've, you've got the 89 in there. And it looks really odd when you see these. Um, some sites um, have just this massive reciprocal. So 1 over, and then it has 33 9s, and then a, an 8, and then it has 34 9s. And you'll get loads of zeros sort of between your Fibonacci numbers, but you'll encode as many Fibonacci numbers as you want when you're doing these things. Okay, quick extension to, um, to add to that. So we have these results, but I've, I've basically just told you that the third result is this. Um, it, it's actually not bad to get to yourself. So if we just generalise what we did in the first two steps, but did it with, we want n uh, digits of Fibonacci in there instead of one or two, so uh, instead of these, that's now going to be n long, as is that, as is that, and so on. We want to have uh, n digits of Fibonacci, and as n gets bigger, we can get an arbitrary number of the Fibonacci numbers in there before they bleed together. Well, the, the general result here is we times by 10 to the n, because we want to move it n places along. If we then add those two things together, and that thing there is 10 to the n plus 1, x. Um, and then this thing here, it was always the square or whatever this thing was, so it's going to be 10 to the 2n. So the overall number here, instead of doing it as a, a specific number, we can do it as a general number, it's going to be that thing take away that thing, which is... 10 to the 2n minus 10 to the n minus 1. As you put in different numbers of n, you, can, you get these different numbers. So if you put in n as 1, this works out as 89. If you put n as 2, this works out as that number there. If you put n as 3, you get that number there. And it keeps following that pattern, the 9999989999. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that.